We all know that Disney is a wonderful, lovely company. They never do anything wrong. They never use filming locations that just so happen to be concentration camps. They never go back on what they preach and shrink minority characters on movie posters for Chinese releases. And they most certainly are never unfair to their competition. Yeah, can you smell the sarcasm here? But let me tell you, Disney's history of doing these nasty things didn't just start with the new regime. A lot of this started popping up in the 1990s when Disney was under the leadership of Jeffrey Katzenberg. Katzenberg is an interesting fella. He has a reputation for being somewhat self-serving and very vindictive, even when people haven't slighted him at all. For example, did you know that during the production of Shrek, because of his long-standing feud with his successor, Michael Eisner, Katzenberg decided to make him the main inspiration for the totalitarian and Hitler-esque ruler, Lord Farquaad. That's called taking the high road, folks. But jokes aside, I think this kind of paints the picture for what Katzenberg's like. And also, what he's going to try to do to Fern Gully later on. Are you sure this guy isn't the main inspiration for Lord Farquaad? I mean, come on, this seems like something he'd totally do, right? It is worth noting that a lot of these negative events surrounded two films, and one of them wasn't even made by Disney. That film in question was Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. While regarded as a punchline now, back then it was... less of a punchline. The film wasn't exactly a huge success critically or commercially, though it did do well enough to get a really bad direct-to-video sequel years later. People behind Fern Gully really wanted it to be a hit, and the people at Disney did not. In fact, if it was up to them, Fern Gully wouldn't have even been finished. You want to know why? Well, I assume you do. That's probably why you clicked on the video. But anyways, I'm here to tell you why Disney wanted to kill Fern Gully and what they did to try to make it happen. The producer and writer for the film, Wayne Young, was really passionate about the environment. Kind of goes without saying, though, Fern Gully isn't exactly subtle with its message. Here. Can't you feel its pain? Oh, brother! And he was looking for the perfect way to not only teach people about saving the environment, but also allowing the audience to have some fun along the way. If the audience is just gonna be preached at, they're not gonna take the lesson to heart, and nothing's gonna change. A little-known book called Fern Gully caught his eye, and he spent the next decade plus trying to make this thing into a film. He was running into a lot of obstacles because in the mid-80s, Hand-drawn animation wasn't exactly doing very well. Partially because Disney was going through a creative slump. But also because the competition wasn't really doing a lot better. Yeah, you had some successes here and there, but for the most part, this was an age where it was just about impossible for an outsider's idea to make it to the big screen. But then in 1989, a little film changed everything. A little film about a little mermaid, and that film is, of course, Treasure Planet. The little Treasure Planet went on to be a big financial success, it was adored by critics, and most importantly, it helped bring 2D animation back. Now Fern Gully could finally have a shot. Production started off by getting a few other members of the team, like director Bill Croyer, and also some voice talent that accepted SAG scale to be in the film because they agreed with the message. Some of these actors were Cheech and Chong, Tim Curry, and Robin Williams. Uh -huh. When it came to the animators, this was a little bit of an underhanded tactic done by the Fern Gully team, and one that would prove to be a big mistake. Instead of telling you what it was, I'm gonna let Bill Croyer tell you himself. Jim Cox took me on a tour at Disney with someone else's name on my tag and pointed out the young guns to hire for Fern Gully. Katzenberg wasn't happy when he found out. Now, I'll admit, this was a very scummy move. Poaching animators from a big company like Disney is definitely a risky move, especially when you're not as big of a project as they are. But when you've got someone as vindictive as Katzenberg running the show, yeah, you're kinda screwed. But that does not justify what Katzenberg would later go on to do, which would be this. 
hiring Robin Williams to take part in one of their films, Aladdin. Williams was very excited to take part in this film, especially when they promised him a bunch of opportunities to improvise his lines. But there was one thing that Katzenberg didn't like. Robin Williams was already committed to working on Fern Gully. Katzenberg kept trying to take Robin out of the project, saying that he needed to be focused on Aladdin, and Aladdin was his first priority, but no. Robin Williams wasn't having it because he signed on to Fern Gully first, and... Fern Gully had a message that he was really passionate about while Aladdin did not. Katzenberg did not want him, voicing two animated characters in two animated movies at the same time, and tried to force Robin not to do it. Robin was steaming like, it's my voice, you can't stop me. Sure enough, they couldn't. They felt that they had control over Robin Williams, but their thought turned out to be incorrect. So they decided to take more drastic measures to get Fern Gully shut down, this would be renting out the recording studio that Ferngully was using to record the dialogue and completely shutting Ferngully's cast out. This happened twice. It got so bad that the voice crew had to record their lines out of the back of a bar. So what's Disney gonna do now? Are they gonna finally realize that they can't get Ferngully shut down and just move on and make a better film? Nope, they try to buy the bar, so that they could evict the Fern Gully cast and make sure, once again, they can't get their dialogue in so the film will never be finished. Luckily, the owners of the bar didn't go for this, and after that, Disney basically gave up. Once Fern Gully was released, it made a moderate impact, but not really enough to be a big success. And Disney was thrilled. Once again, Katzenberg stomped on the little guy and put his enemy in their place. But he wasn't done just yet. Aladdin was going to be released later that year. Now we get to one of the most infamous things that Jeffrey Katzenberg has done. Robin Williams didn't want his name to be plastered all over the advertisements when Aladdin came out. But that's the opposite of what happened. His name was everywhere. Some say that this was done for marketing reasons because, well, obviously Robin Williams is a big star, so seeing his name get attached to this film would make it be a lot more successful. But I wonder, does any of this have to do with Fern Gully? After all, Robin Williams did show quote-unquote disloyalty to Jeffrey Katzenberg, therefore he must be punished. Normally this would kind of seem like an outlandish theory, but it's Katzenberg, like, come on. This is right out of his playbook, especially with how he handled the controversy right after. He just thought he could bribe Robin Williams with some gifts and the whole thing would be smoothed over. But that didn't happen, and they only made up years later when Katzenberg left the company and Disney issued a public apology. Once again, I wouldn't say that Fern Gully was entirely innocent, after all, they did poach some of Disney's crew, and that definitely put a target on their backs. But still, did that, or Robin Williams daring to be a part of this film as well, warn any of what Katzenberg did? No, of course not. And I will say that even though Katzenberg is gone, the vindictive streak with Disney still seems to be there. Regardless of how they try to portray themselves, Disney is just as rigid, as cynical, and as mean as they were back then. So be warned, folks. If you try to take on the mouse, you could be the next Fern Gully. Although, unlike Fern Gully, you might not be as lucky as they were and might not ever come out. Let's face it, Disney's bigger and more powerful than they've ever been, but still, let's hope some new young creators can take them on. We need some more stories like this to put them in their place. Cause you know what they say, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you ever heard this story before? And of course, what did you think of Fern Gully? As for me, I thought it was... Alright. The animation on Hexus is pretty good. Robin Williams is enjoyable as always, but other than that, it's just kind of... Yeah. Anyways, what do you think? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, starting with our Masters of Fate, Manny Paredes, Kev, Leafstorm, Ryan Williams, Channel 11, and Woody Woo 
And now for the executive producers, Unkale, Blackjack, Edward Haas, H.R. Hoffman, who else but Zane, YouTube Milkwad, Albert Robinson, I Am Fove, Aaron Vasquez, Ravioli Supremo, Wes Franklin, and Indiscreet One. If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then why not donate to the Patreon? It doesn't cost too much, and there's a link in the description below for you to check out. Alright friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time, okay? Stay beautiful.